It is super specific. Teaching people how to draw realistic animals using colored pencils. Can we really build a business going after like a super niche like that? And the answer to that is yes, that's the power of the internet. And the more specific you are, the easier it is for you to attract your people. Hello, hello. I am so excited that you are here for this episode of the She Meets Business Show because I am talking about something that comes up so much um, and that is how to build a membership, how to generate recurring revenue. And I am joined by the one and only Stu McLaren to talk about this, which is so exciting. Stu, thank you so much for joining me. Well, I am thrilled to be here. We were just chatting uh, before we hit the record button that, Carrie, this is like the year number 10 that we have known each other. Isn't that crazy? It is so crazy. And I just feel like it's been such a wild adventure over these past 10 years of actually of me building a membership. And obviously you've built like, and helped people build, my God, so many memberships. Um, And yeah, it's just one, it just time goes by so fast though. (laughs) Um, It does. Yeah. But, and and think to think though, that like in this whole 10 years, I still have my membership and it still does really, really well. (laughs) I was just about to take a moment and acknowledge you for that because uh, when we first met, we met because you had questions about like growing your membership. You had already launched it. You you didn't have all the answers, but you figured out how to at least get it going. And that was a huge, you know, uh, boost to you. And by the way, like, that's just what an entrepreneur does for everybody watching and listening. Like you are never going to have all the answers, but you just do the best with what you got. You did. And you had grown it to over a thousand members. I remember, um, you know, prior to us meeting. But then like to see how you have consistently like stuck with your membership, grown the membership, and you've had a membership for 10 years. Carrie, like we just need to take a moment and acknowledge you for that because there are very (laughs) few people that have done that. And that's just a testament to you just putting out tremendous value to your people. I know. And I love it so much. And one of the biggest reasons why I love it is because like the past few years, especially like with having kids and then... um, I, I kind of, I lost myself a little bit with that whole situation. And then I have had like, you know, trying to grow the team and trying to figure out like, how do I be this leader and, you know, making all kinds of mistakes and taking my eye off the ball from a marketing perspective. But I, if I did not have a membership, I feel like it would have impacted me like mm massively but the fact that i have a membership that has that is that amazing community and that generates that recurring revenue it's created so much stability and that is amazing and that's really what i wanted to talk about is the power of recurring revenue how people can be generating recurring revenue why people need to be generating recurring revenue um and how they can actually do it because it's such a game changer well let's just take a a quick glance at your situation there like when we met you weren't engaged, weren't married, didn't have kids, uh, didn't have a very big team whatsoever. And through that journey, like many times as entrepreneurs, we need space to be able to approach decisions with a clear mind. But Mm -hmm. 99% of business owners don't have that space because they feel the tension at the start of every month that they're starting from zero again and yeah. they've got to do something. They've got to go and hustle to make sales. They've got to do a promotion of some kind. They've got to you know, go out and somehow drum up new clients or whatever it might be. And there's always this pressure to be able to generate new sales just to keep things afloat. So you never have this space to like think bigger or dream bigger because you're just always trying to, you're, you're in the weeds of it, just trying to be able to make ends meet. And that's why like a membership is so important for business owners because it gives us that breathing room. So like when you did get married and when you did have kids, you had breathing room to actually like, you know, know, immerse yourself in that whole new evolution of life, you know, and when it comes to business, like that's why I'm a huge, huge believer in memberships. And I'm also a big believer because it eliminates so many of the other pressures uh, in business and life that we may or not real may or may not realize, and I'm happy to unpack that as well. But just from a, 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 a business owner's perspective, it gives us space to just yeah. breathe, think, dream, and uh, and really um, make better decisions. Yeah, it's so true. But before I had my membership, it was like feast or famine. It was like I was doing these um, 
like affiliate promotions for people and it would be great if I got one in one month and and I got some revenue in but it was always like so hit and miss and some months I didn't have anything and then no revenue was coming in at all and it was just like oh I don't want to be in this situation and I'm so blooming grateful to my past self for making the decision to start a membership and sticking with it and figuring it out and I think, yeah, we can get into all this stuff of like, because all the reasons why people are afraid to start memberships, but like, honestly, if you do it and you can just keep going and like crack the code with it and create that success, like it's so incredible. Well, one of the things that like was alarming for me recently was, you know, in the US, the US government is on the verge of completely banning TikTok. And that you know, in and of itself, we might be like, oh, okay, so what, you know, US, the Americans, they don't have like, you know, a social media channel, boo hoo, no big deal. But here's the reality of the situation. There are over 7 million business owners who depend on currently TikTok for either traffic leads or sales. So with one decision from the US government, 7 million businesses are gonna have that swept out from underneath them. So you have all these creators right now who are scrambling, they're like, ah! And they're facing the reality of like, their bread and butter platform, TikTok, you know, potentially is gonna disappear overnight. So what do they do? So they're trying to move their audience to another platform or they're trying to quickly, you know, grab the email addresses and all the things that, you know, have created vulnerability for them, TikTok, now they're being exposed to it and the reality is setting in that that could disappear overnight. And here's the truth of the matter though, virtually every business has these types of vulnerabilities. Like back a few years, so many businesses discovered it with the pandemic, right? Like imagine, like you would never think like a brick and mortar store would never think or ever worry about the fact that they couldn't open their doors. Yeah. But a few years ago, governments worldwide were saying, ah, ah everybody stay home. And now all these business owners were scrambling. And so every business has vulnerabilities like this. The number one, first, we gotta get clear on like what could be our potential vulnerability. You mentioned like a business that maybe depends on promotions each month. And if if a promotion doesn't go well, that's the month that you're probably gonna famine and not feast. And that's a vulnerability. Or like if your business is solely dependent on Facebook for ad traffic, and then all of a sudden your ad account gets banned or whatever, that's happened to to people and it's sent them scrambling. And so we all have these vulnerabilities, but the reason I love memberships is they eliminate so much of that stress because at the beginning of every month, you're going to get paid by however many members you have, and that's gonna happen automatically. So regardless of what happens in the outside world, you still have that stability. And it reminds me of a story during the pandemic. Uh, One woman from our community, her name's Casey Hope, and she has like a a physical brick and mortar art studio. So kids come into her studio, she teaches them art. Well, of course the pandemic hits, studio has to shut down. And she sends me a message and it was just a message of gratitude because a few years earlier, she had started a membership site, a digital membership, teaching calligraphy. And she wrote me a message and she said, Stu, Normally in this moment, I would be in sheer panic, like being told that I've got to close my doors and I can't, you know, welcome people in. I can't do business. She said, I'd be panicking about like paying my rent. I'd be panicking about paying my staff. I'd be panicking about myself being able to generate income and put food on the table. She said, but I don't have any of that stress because I've got my calligraphy membership. It's keeping us all afloat is keeping the bills paid is keeping us moving forward so that when we do open great we get to you know open the studio again but at least i'm not worried and sick and uh fearful of our future and that's exactly what we're talking about right Carrie? it's like that stability and predictability i know got it just so it's everything isn't it so obviously memberships they generate recurring revenue meaning that you get paid every single month or you get monthly we've got annual subscriptions some people do like quarterly plans different like different uh cycles of payments but knowing that that revenue is coming in is so 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 powerful so i want to talk to you Stu, about like when did you first get into memberships because obviously you've been involved in memberships for such a Mm -hmm. long time like will you share some of your story around memberships and your experience of building memberships well it was accidental uh and for me, it, it happened in 2008. So uh, the year prior, my wife and I, Amy, had gotten married and we had been talking about starting a family. 
And at the time I had a, a great business. I had a consulting business and I was chock-a-block full. And um, what I realized though, was that the only way to grow that business was to give more of my time and I didn't have any more time to give. And so we're having this discussion about starting a family and I'm starting to realize like, if I wanna be a present husband and a present father and I wanna grow my business, like the business model that I had at the time was not working. Mm -hmm. And so there was going to be a need for change. And I'm sure like anybody listening or watching who works with clients can understand that tension, right? Like mm -hmm. we wanna grow the business, we wanna add more clients, but more clients means more time and ah! So anyway, um, I was talking to a mentor of mine about this and he said, you know what, Stu, you should just start a membership. And at the time I had no idea what a membership was. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, look, he said, all that work that you're doing for your clients, what if you just taught other people how to do what you were doing for those clients? Instead though, you could teach once and you could get paid by many people simultaneously for the same teachings. And I was like, you know, it took me a little bit to wrap my head around. I'm like, but that would be, that would be amazing. So I went down that path. The challenge was in 2008, the technology is not what it is today. And <laughs> I am comfortable around tech, but I am not a programmer. So I was in things like HT access files and server settings, and it was like way over my head. So then I'm moaning and groaning to a friend of mine, Tracy. And I was saying, dude, I just want to teach. I don't want to deal with all this technical stuff, blah, 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 blah. And he said, look, he said, why don't you just create your own solution? And I remember when he said that, Carrie, I was like, is he even listening to me? I'm like, I legit just told him I'm struggling with the tech. I said, no, dude, I'm not going to do that. I'm not a programmer. And he said, well, why don't we team up? He said, I've got a great programmer that works with me. We could create a membership solution. And that's what we did. And we launched it a month later and it went on to become the world's number one membership platform for WordPress. So I had an intention of starting a membership. I ended up starting a whole membership software platform. And that thing went on to power over 70,000 online communities and memberships. Wow. And so being behind the scenes of all of these memberships, I started to notice patterns. And I started to see that there was this small group of membership owners that were growing year over year over year. Everyone else had flatlined, meaning like they had launched their membership, but they weren't really seeing any significant growth year over year. But this small group was. So I started paying attention to like, what are they doing differently? And that's when I started to see the way in which they position their memberships, the content they provide, the marketing, the retention, all of it was different than what everybody else was uh, utilizing their memberships. And so I just started teaching. I started teaching other membership site owners how to launch, grow, and scale profitable memberships. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And now we've helped tens of thousands of people in all kinds of markets from photography and calligraphy to fitness and finance and music and art and health and dog training. We even have Holly George in our community who has a membership teaching people how to make balloon animals for crying out loud. Um, so that's where it started and that's where we are uh, today. And so I've been teaching people now for over 10 years or actually well, it's a lot longer than that. Uh, I've been teaching people a long decades how to launch and grow memberships. But I love the fact that you have so many diverse examples of memberships because I think people think, or so often I see people think, yeah, but I don't really know what I would create a membership doing. And there's this like resistance because they think it's not for them or, but I mean, mm. you've got so many different examples of people who have created like, I mean, a balloon making membership like yeah whatever. and like, you know that's one of the actual secrets to a great membership is getting very specific like i'll give you an example so um there's a woman in our community her name's bonnie snowden she's from the uk and uh she in 2021 launched a new membership and in two years had grown that membership to a multi-million dollar membership Okay, now mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you the market, and this is what's crazy, of how specific you can be and experience so much success. She teaches people how to draw realistic animals using colored pencils. So like, it is super specific. Teaching people how to draw realistic animals using colored pencils. Like, that is so specific. And many times the natural reaction is like, 
can we really build a business like going after like a, a super niche like that? And the answer to that is yes, that's the power of the internet. And the more specific you are, the easier it is for you to attract your people. So I was just talking to a gentleman this week from Slovenia. Slovenia is a small country, 2 million people. So he's like the Tony Robbins of Slovenia. So, you know, he has very broad marketing and he wants to come into the English speaking market. And I said, dude, your marketing has got to shift. You can't appeal to everybody trying to help them with everything. You want to pick like a very specific person with a very specific problem or desire. And that's where you target your marketing. And when you do that with a membership, it's so much easier to grow. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But it's just incredible what is possible and what people can create. Um, I think one of like talking about fears around people starting memberships, like one of the biggest worries I had was like, am I going to run out of content ideas? Um, like, and is this going to be like this content hamster wheel of like having to keep mm. going? But then I realized, obviously, you you share this, like, but when you get organized with what you're sharing and you break it down and you simplify it, like it doesn't need to be overwhelming. Like it shouldn't be overwhelming because if it's overwhelming for you, it's overwhelming for everyone else as well. Um, you hit the nail right on the head. And that's the actual number one reason why people cancel from a membership is overwhelm. And so to your point, like you want to keep it simple for your people, like high value. It doesn't necessarily mean high volume, right? It doesn't mean we have to just load people up with so much stuff. Like high value means that they're actually using it and implementing it and getting results. Yeah. And so what that means is that many times the less we provide, the more value we create, which is counterintuitive, completely counterintuitive, but you got to create space for people to learn and you got to create space for people to implement. And if you don't create the space for people to implement, they're never going to get the results and then it will lead to overwhelm. And PS, this is also true for like uh, physical product memberships as well, like subscription boxes, because if people uh, are not using what's in the subscription box and month after month, these subscription boxes start stacking up. It's only a matter of time before they look over and they see all these stacks yeah. and be like, I'm not even using this stuff. Like I'm going to just cancel. So consumption is like the number one game. And when it comes to producing content, like back in the day with one of my memberships, um, I was business partners with Michael Hyatt, uh, who's a New York Times bestselling author. And when we came together, he was super busy. He was speaking 30 to 40 times a year. So a day on the front and a day on the back for travel, that meant he was gone over hundred days a year. He was at the time writing a blog post every single day of the week, and he was publishing a podcast weekly. So like he didn't have time to produce a whole bunch of content for a membership. But what we did was we got very strategic, just like you said, like a very specific process. And we would produce a year's worth of content over the course of six days. So we would schedule three two day video shoots throughout the year. And during those two day video shoots, they were bang, 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 bang scheduled. And we would produce all this content and then we would schedule it in the membership. So six days, he would produce a year's worth of content. That's what can be done when you've got a great content plan and you uh, just uh, create a process and schedule it out ahead of time. Yeah, I love it. It's simplifying it. So for people who are listening that like I, are they thinking, oh my gosh, I really want to generate recurring revenue. I want to explore a membership. Like where, where would you say they should start? Well, um, I would encourage everybody to come join us for our free workshop. Yes, uh, definitely do that. I will leave sure. the link. Yeah, we'll leave the link for that. But here's where I always love to get started with anybody is first and foremost, just get clear on specifically who you serve and how specifically you want to help. The reality is people join memberships because they're looking to achieve a certain outcome. Maybe it's they are overweight and they want to get down to their ideal weight. That's, you know, uh, that's not going to happen overnight. That's a journey makes perfect for a membership. Or maybe they're in a broken relationship and they want an amazing relationship with their spouse. Again, that's a problem that's not going to get solved overnight makes for a great membership. Or maybe they want to learn a skill. So they just bought a brand new guitar and they want to learn how to, you know, be able to play great songs for their friends around the campfire. Well, again, that's not going to happen overnight. Makes for a great membership because they're learning that skill. Or maybe there are a female business owner that wants to be able to launch a business. They're going to join the Female Entrepreneurs Association because that's exactly where they're going to learn how to do that successfully. So if you're helping people, when I talk about getting 
uh, uh, clear about who you serve and how you help, it really falls into one of three categories. One, it's either helping people solve an ongoing problem like losing weight, bad relationship, or puppy that's wildly out of control that they want to train. Or it falls into a category of they want to learn a new skill. I want to learn how to paint. I want to learn how to play music. I want to learn how to grow a business, whatever it might be. Or the third category is they would like some convenience in their life. So a great example of this is Tara Phillips. She has a membership that has over 850 members teaching um, homeschooling parents and teachers who have autistic children in their classrooms. And she provides them lesson plans for these autistic children. Do you see how specific that is? Like, but anyway, my point is she's providing these lesson plans. Julie Soul is another example of that. She provides art lessons for homeschooling parents. The key here with the convenience side is you're creating lesson plans or templates or resources that people can use that save them a ton of time. Another example of that one is Andrew Krauss over in Australia. He has a membership site, higher price point. I think it's like 350 bucks a month. And it provides real estate agents um, Facebook ad templates. So they don't have to bec become a Facebook ad expert. They could just use his templates. And if they sell one home as a result of those ads throughout the entire year, the membership's paid for itself. But it creates a tremendous amount of convenience. So when I th think about starting a membership, I'm looking at, number one, a very specific person who has a very specific problem or challenge or desired outcome that they're after. And then I'm thinking about, is this a problem, an ongoing problem that I'm solving? Is it a skill I'm helping somebody try to acquire? Or am I creating convenience for them? Because those three uh, are great knowledge-based memberships. Yeah, I love that so much. I w one thing I wanted to ask is, Obviously, a lot of the time people are like, should I create a course? Should I create a membership? What do I create? So when do you think somebody should create a course? And when do you think somebody should create a membership? And also, does the size of your audience play into that decision? Many people think you need uh, tens of thousands or even thousands to launch a membership. That's not true. Uh, you can launch a membership site with just a couple hundred people. So if you've got 200 people or more following you on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you know, TikTok, wherever, like you've got plenty or an email list, you've got plenty of uh, people that you can go to to start and do your founding member launch. But when I'm thinking about membership versus course, it's not one or the other. It's actually both. Like they go together like peanut butter and chocolate. Like they are made for each other because a course it helps people go deep in what it is that you're learning. And there are times when people just want to immerse themselves and learn as much as they possibly can in the shortest time possible. Like a perfect example is when I was setting up my home video studio. Like I, I just wanted to be able to uh, you know, soak up, okay, what equipment do I need? What setup do I need? Like what microphones do I need? Like help me just like get it set up. Like I just want to go deep. And then there are times um, when once people learn what to do, there's a gap between knowing what to do and then actually getting the result that they're after. And that takes time to learn those things or to master those skills. And that's where a membership comes into play. So I love courses for helping people go deep in their learning. It's a great place to start, uh, but a membership is a great place to support people in implementing what they have learned and then vice versa. You can start a generalized membership, but then you could also have specific courses that go deep in particular subject matter. And the best buyers of a course are members of your membership. So they go hand in hand together. They can support one another, either as a front end or a back end to each other. And as we stated, uh, you don't need a big audience to get started. A couple hundred people is all yeah. more than enough to get the wheels going. I feel like it's so true. Like when I started my membership, I wanted to do the membership because the idea of having to create a course and figuring out this complete like kind of program for like just was too much. It was so overwhelming. And whereas I was like, I can do a month, I can create a month's worth of content. <laughs> I remember I did my success month was the first bundle in my membership that I created. And I really didn't have anything planned beyond that. And so then I was just kind of creating stuff as I went, but it helped me to just get going with it because mm. I just... I don't know, it didn't feel as like big and heavy as for me in my head trying to create a course. But now we have the membership. We also have like a 12 week program where it is for people who want to achieve a very specific result in a defined period of time. And it's super intense and 
full on, but it's for people who like, you know, it's when you join a membership, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's community, there's connection, there's friendship, there's learning, there's all those amazing benefits. But sometimes people just want a big kick up the backside to like take massive action. And so that's where I find that our like accelerator goes hand in hand. And then so often it is the members who then are joining the accelerator because then they already love what we're doing and creating. And it's like, they want it to be more hands-on, more intense. Um, totally. They're, they're just different experiences. It's, it's almost like, you know, trying to compare like a live event versus uh, a book. I mean, it could be the same information. It's just a different experience, right? Like a live event is much like a course. It's more intense, you know, it's more compressed. Uh, whereas a book, you can take your time with it, you know, and it's a, it's just a different experience in terms of the way we consume the information. So it's not one is better than the other. It's like they're both amazing and they've actually both complement each other. Yeah. And then to your point, which I hope people picked up on, which is when you started your membership, you didn't have a grand plan for all the content for every single month. And I'm, uh, I because I've known you for many, many years, but I'm going to make the assumption that your members actually helped guide your thinking in terms of the ideas for the content that you wanted to produce, right? So all the time. So often we put this pressure on ourselves that we got to come up with all the answers, but our members are actually one of the greatest sources of ideas for all the content. Yeah. Yeah. Literally every year we survey them. We ask questions all the time to find out. And like, you know, what I find is just the, the thing that helps me the most is when I post a little, uh, something in the Facebook group and I'm like, what are you stuck with right now? What questions do you have for me? And then I'm like, well, that just gave me four masterclasses ideas. Thank you very much. Because I'm just like, right, I know what you need. I know what you need. I can create this now. And it's, yeah, it can just be, it's finding those little ways to make it feel easier and take the pressure off. But I think the bottom line is, like you said before, like I think every online business or every business should be gener needs to find a way to generate recurring revenue so that you have that stability. And so it's not this whole uh, you know, worry at the beginning of the month that you've got to like bring all this new revenue in, um, like, cause that's exhausting. And I think it's about creating businesses that are going to actually enable us to live our best lives and, uh, actually enjoy it and not be totally. stressing. So, I mean, yes, there's always going to be elements of stress and whatnot, but like with a membership, like when, like, yeah, when, when Casey, my son was born, like I took off so much time and, we had the revenue coming in and it was, it was just, it's been amazing. And well, I what just... a huge blessing for like a, like a mom to yeah. be able to, especially a mom that's an entrepreneur, because, you know, there are a lot of moms who may be working in the corporate world who, you know, can uh, earn, you know, maternity pay during that time that helps offset, you know, some of that time. But an entrepreneurial mom is a different situation because, well, you're your own boss. So, you know, if you don't make money, if your business doesn't make money, then you can't really take time off. And that yeah. creates that tension. But as a mom, like how, how beautiful is that? You had set your business up to be able to give you that space to be able to take time when you know, your kids were born yeah. to, you know, to be a mom and not have the stress and worry of like, oh my gosh, like, are we going to be able to generate revenue during this time? And that's what a membership does. Like, it gives us the stability, the predictability, it eliminates so much stress, and it gives us the ability to make better decisions because now we can make better decisions about how much we invest in our marketing, how much we invest in hiring a team, because we know that that revenue is going to be there. It's scalable. And that's yeah. a different situation than a business that has income that goes up one month, down on the other, and, and it's unpredictable. Yeah. Like I think of Mary Claire Fredette. She's in a service-based business. She's a masseuse. And she came into our community many years ago and launches a service-based membership. And I was catching up with her last year and I asked her how it had been going. And she said, well, actually I haven't launched since the first time that I did it. And I was like, oh no. And she said, no, 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 it's good. She's like, I actually haven't had a need to launch. She said, I've had over 80% of my members stay for more than three years. What that did for her massage business is instead of hoping that the customers were gonna come back each month, she knew with certainty that those members would be paying her at the start of every month and they would get a certain number of massages. And so they were, her clients were getting more consistent massages, better for them. She was getting predictable income, great for her. It's a win-win for both scenarios. So no matter if somebody has a product-based business, you can start a membership. There's tons of them. 
uh, especially when it comes to subscription box base uh, businesses or like socks of the month, ties of the month, candles of the month, earrings of the month, there's of the month products. Then there's service-based memberships like Mary Claire Fredette with her massage uh, studio. There's also like barber shops here in Toronto that charge on a monthly basis mm -hmm. uh, for so many cuts a, a month. There's tons of service-based memberships. Then there's uh, knowledge-based memberships. This is the vast majority of them where we're teaching people how to solve an ongoing problem, a skill, and or we're creating convenience. And then there's community-based memberships where people are just paying just to be part of a community of like-minded individuals. You and I, Carrie, we both pay mm -hmm. significant amounts of money every year to be part of communities of other entrepreneurs. That's an example of a community-based uh, membership. So bottom line is these recurring revenue models can be woven into any business. We just gotta open our minds to it and start exploring the idea. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and talking about memberships. I hope everyone listening is like, I'm going to do it. Um, but like Stu said, go and check out his membership workshop. Honestly, he does it once a year. So if you've missed it, just go and sign up and get on the waitlist for next year. But if you haven't, go and watch it because it's absolute gold and it will really help you to get started with it. And like Stu, obviously, you've helped me so much over the years. Like Stu, when I back in 2015, when we did a VIP day, like and my membership was around a thousand members. Stu taught me how to market my membership. And that year we got to 3000 members. And I remember doing that first launch and welcoming 1200 new members in seven days. Like Stu taught me how to do that stuff. And I just, you are full of so much knowledge when it comes to building memberships, generating recurring revenue, both from like setting it up, but also from like marketing it. And um, yeah, so honestly, for those of you that are listening, thinking I really need to do this, you really need to go and sign up for that free membership workshop experience because you will you will thank me. <laughs> I'm just so glad that we got to chat and talk about this stuff. Um, so yeah, everyone go sign up. Stu, thank you so much. Um, you'll My have to pleasure. come back again. We'll have to talk more, more on memberships. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just really hope this has inspired everyone. I would just encourage everybody, This now is the time. You know, like, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have the clarity about, you know, every single next step. That's, that's what we're here to help you figure out. Uh, but the bottom line is, like, you can't ever get the result if you don't ever take that first step. And so, first and foremost, just take that first step. Number one, come join us for the free workshop because you'll come away with a ton of clarity about who to market to, who to serve, what makes for a great membership, what you're, well, what to provide inside the membership so it's high value, easy for you, all that stuff. But most importantly, it's just like opening yourself up to the idea of having recurring revenue in your business because it is possible, especially if you start asking yourself how. How could I make this possible for my business? You do that, you're going to turn your brain on and you're going to have all kinds of answers that will come flooding your way. So yeah. uh, thanks for having me, Carrie. It's always a pleasure. And uh, thanks, yeah. everybody. Amazing. Thank you so much, Stu. And I really hope you've all enjoyed it. Definitely leave a comment and let me know. And if you've got any questions that come up, message me. I, I am Carrie Green on Instagram um, or send us an email. We're here. And I'm so excited for all of you that are going to take action on this and build a membership site. Uh, so keep me posted on it. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time for another episode of the She Means Business Show. Mm -hmm.